Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to Elect Woman of God's um, YouTube channel. I am the Elect Woman. I am Apostle Marguerite Isaac, the wife of Prophet Jerry Isaac, an awesome man of God who I love and adore so much. Um, but I just want to take some time out tonight to, first of all, just give glory to God for all that he has done in my life and in my husband's life in in our ministry we we have just been really overwhelmed with his love his faithfulness his goodness and and just the the demonstration of his power and his goodness in our life has just been overwhelming and these last few months he has just been downloading in our spirit a fresh anointing a fresh word fresh hope and even new marching orders new plans and it's on that strength, on that um, passion that I am even here tonight to share a word from the Lord with you all. You know, we are going into 2020, the year 2020. I don't know about you, but huh, God has spoken clearly some things and some things we are still waiting to get a word from him, a word of direction, a word of instruction. But the things that we have heard, we are holding tight to. We're not letting them go. And we are expecting to see that word fulfill itself. So we have for 2020, we have vision. And... um we are expecting God to send resources to bring that vision to pass. Um, but until those resources actually manifest in the physical, we have to hold on to the word that he's given us. And the word itself is our resource. It's our provision. It is the substance of the things that we are hoping for and the evidence of the things that we have yet to see. But 2020 holds some great promises, some great and precious promises that we are holding out for. Um, and 2019 hasn't been bad to us and the years prior haven't been bad to us. But there's so much to come. And so this word that I want to share with you tonight, I actually ministered this word on Sunday. And the Lord laid on my heart to, to lay it out on a YouTube and to let this word not just stay in our local assembly amongst our leaders who we lead, but for it to be released um, around the world, for it just to have no boundaries on the word. And so um, it's, I'm not going to say it's a challenge for me. Because I'm not, I'm not shy or any of those things. I'm an apostle, you know. I have no problem with, with ministering the word, but the challenge just really comes in to me just being disciplined and coming forward and doing it on this format. And of course, not having people in front of you to pull on the anointing, you have to pull it out yourself. So I just pray that this word blesses you. Um, I have notes here, so I'm going to be referring to my notes as well. I don't want you to be distracted by that, though. I want you to focus in on this word that I'm going to share with you tonight. In this word, there's going to be a, a prophetic instruction. There's going to be some prophetic confession and even activation in your faith. But there's also going to be some revelation, I believe. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be released that you're going to catch in this word. So uh, let me go ahead and just get started. But I first want to just pray a little bit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you this evening, God. I come to you, Lord God, 
with a spirit of great expectancy. God, I expect you to anoint this word afresh. I, I know it's anointed when it was spoken out of, when it proceeded out of your mouth into my heart, but for the hearers, for the listeners that is going to hear this word over the next months and even over the next year, Lord God, put a fresh anointing on this word. Anoint their ears to be able to hear. Unclog their spiritual ears, God, so that they can have the ears of the church so that they can receive what you are speaking to them, God. Let this word be revelation in their spirit. Let it sear their spirit, their minds, their hearts, their souls, so that they'll never be able to get away from it. They will always remember the words that were spoken on this night. So that when when the enemy would come in and try to um, take them into a place of discouragement, and cause them to focus on that with that thing that has disappointed them, that they can pull out of their spirit a word, a rhema word. So that, that let that blade, that that sword that they pull out have fire on both sides, so they can cut the enemy coming and going. When the enemy would come in to try to steal what you have set before them and have decreed was theirs to achieve, theirs to hold, theirs to stand on, theirs to prosper with in 2020 and beyond. Bless me, Lord God, with a fresh anointing, with a YouTube anointing to be able to deliver this word in a way that sets their hearts and spirits ablaze. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so listen. Tonight will just be the first of a series of messages that are going to point back to 2020 vision. But I just want you to hear that. 2020 vision. Okay. I, I want to ask you a question. Are you aware or do you know that there are enemies to your destiny, whose sole life work, sole existence is to cause all of your spiritual efforts to perish. And not only cause them to perish, but to be erased from the memory of others. And, and even if that enemy was able to, he would erase your efforts from the memory of God. But I thank God that the enemy isn't able to do that. God remembers. He knows your work. And you will be judged accordingly to your work. But this enemy, he desires to still kill and to destroy your legacy, to destroy your purpose, to destroy even your destiny before you arrive to there. He, he He's a killer. He's a hater. He's a killer. This enemy conceals itself among many good things. Mm -hmm. Good things like church programs, uh -huh, uh, building projects, outreach efforts, revivals, a myriad of ministry things that you could do, um, anything that is a good thing, anything that you feel passionate about and that you know uh, it can be um, um, beneficial to people. This enemy even conceals himself in those things. This enemy that I'm speaking of, of course we know the spirit in operation, is the devil. But this specific en enemy I want to talk about tonight is blindness. 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 You know, Helen Keller once said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Sight but no vision. So, so this enemy that conceals itself among many good things, like I was saying, you know, ministry efforts, so on and so forth. A lot of times we do these things blind, with, with no vision, with no vision. But I'm not talking about the vision you may think I'm talking about. 
But before I get there, I want to lift up a scripture to you to help you to understand the vision I am talking about. I'm talking about Proverbs 29, 18, where it says, where there is no vision, people perish. But happy is he who keeps the law. That's Proverbs 29, 29, 18. The vision I am talking about is not referring to your church vision statement, your your mission statement, your your ministry vision statement, or even your business vision statement. It's not the vision I'm talking about. Though it is important, don't get me wrong, having a vision statement is important because, you know, what it does is it gives you uh, a way to measure whether or not you are being fruitful in your efforts. So say, for instance, our vision statement at CEK at Crossover Empowerment Kingdom Ministries is to empower people to cross over under the cross and live fulfilled, meaningful kingdom lives by providing the gospel of Christ Jesus, spiritual nurturing, sound doctrine, and opportunity to serve in the kingdom. We are a ministry that ministers intentionally and seeks to aid as we are able and to bring hope and empowerment to those who are in bondage to poverty, ignorance, fear, prejudice, and hostility. So us having this vision statement, what it does, it helps us to gauge whether or not we are being fruitful in the work which we are called to. But surely, a ministry will not perish simply because it doesn't have a vision statement, right? So when it says here in 2918, where there's no vision, the people perish, we can't be talking about a vision statement for the church. Mm -mm. When we look at this passage of scripture in Proverbs 2019, the key word in this passage, of course, is vision. And when you look at what this word actually means, this word actually means revelation, revelation. And it's pointing to the word of God or the revelation of God. Now, in other words, if you were to take the word revelation and now say that scripture again, Proverbs 29, 18, remove the word vision and put the word revelation there. You know, it would say where there is no revelation, my people perish. But guess what? Uh, even a more accurate interpretation of this word revelation, because I don't want you to get stuck right there. When we're talking about revelation, we're talking about the revealed word of God. The revealed word of God. We're not talking about the Bible itself. We're not talking about the book. We're talking about the revealed word from the book, out of the book. So, so if we were to look at the, the correct interpretation, the revealed word of God, a more accurate interpretation or translation of that passage of scripture would be where there is no revealed word of God, the people perish, but happy is he who obeys God's word. Okay. The NIV says it like this, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. The New Living Translation says it like this. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. We're getting to 2020 vision. We're getting there. Hold on now. And then the English Standard Version says, where there is no prophetic vision. Ah, we're getting there. Where there is no prophetic vision. Prophetic vision is the revealed word of God now. So where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Mm. So let's marry these different 
concepts together. And let's now say Proverbs 29, 18 like this. Where there is no revealed word of God, no prophetic vision, the people perish. But happy, prosperous, established, blessed is he who obeys the revealed word of God. Therefore, the true enemy of your destiny is one, not having a prophetic vision, not having the revealed word of God, not having the revelation of God's word. Okay. The second is not believing the prophetic vision and not obeying the prophetic vision, not working it, not executing the instructions, the word of the vision that has been revealed to you. The book of Nehemiah is a great example of the truth of this passage of scripture. Because we read in the book of Nehemiah how when the people rediscovered, rediscovered the word of God and it was read for everyone to hear and understand what happened, the result was revival, revival. The hearing, believing, and obey, obeying, the executing, the obedience to the revealed word of God brought life back to the people and to God's city. God's word gives us life only when we obey it. We have to respond to it. We have to, it's one thing for somebody to speak a word over you, to release a word in your life. But if you don't first of all believe it and then uh, uh, work your belief, work your faith, you will die with that word unfulfilled. The fulfilled word is fulfilled through your partnering with that word. Your partnering not just with your faith, but with your actions. So. There is a prescription for 2020 vision, okay? We're talking about 2020 vision for the, the year to come, but then we're also talking about 2020 vision as it is um, seeing well, okay? We've heard about 2020 vision in the natural. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But there is a prescription Mm -hmm. If you if you have if you're dull of seeing, just like if you're dull of seeing in your eyes, you would go to the eye doctor and, and you would be checked and he would give you a prescription to bring your sight back to at least 2020, which is good, a good eyesight to have. And so I want to give you a prescription. This is the word from God. This is your prescription to get your 2020 vision back so you can see in the spirit and you can see what God has for you because without 2020 vision, you're going to perish. You're going to perish. This is the word of the Lord. So there is a prescription for 2020 prophetic vision or revelation for life. And it is found in the book of Second Chronicles. Now, I'm going to let you know, God gave me this revelation a couple of years ago. And I even preached a message on it in June 2018 in Second Chronicles 2020 that this is 2020 vision. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 is our prescription for 2020 vision. Okay. But before I go there, I want to just set it up and I want to talk about 2020 vision naturally speaking okay so that we can catch the spiritual um revelation so 2020 vision 
<clears throat> is a term that is used to express normal visual acuity. Your visual acuity is simply the clarity of or, or sharpness of vision. All right. And so 2020 vision, I want you to hear what I said. 2020 vision is the term that is used to express normal, not exceptional, normal visual acuity. And it is measured at a distance of 20 feet. That's why they use the number 20. If you have 2020 vision, you can see clearly at 20 feet what should normally be seen at that distance. If you have 20 slash 100 vision, that means that you must be as close as 20 feet to see what a person with normal vision can see at 100 feet. Having 20-20 vision does not necessarily mean that you have perfect vision. Mm -mm. 20, 20 vision only indicates basically uh, the sharpness or clarity of vision at a distance. Other important vision skills, including peripheral awareness or side vision, eye coordination, depth perception, focusing ability, and color vision contribute to your overall visual ability. Some people can see well at a distance but are unable to bring nearer objects into focus. This condition can be caused by farsightedness or the loss of focusing ability. Others can see items that are close but cannot see those far away. This condition may be caused by nearsightedness. Now, when they test you, when you go into the ophthalmologist and they test you, if you can identify the letters on one of the smaller lines near the bottom, y'all know on that grid, those letters get a lot smaller. If you can identify the letters or uh, um, on one of the smaller lines, then they say that you have the standard 2020 vision. If you can only read the larger letter sizes that are above the 2020 line, then, then they say you have poor visual acuity. So instead of having 2020 vision, you have 2040 vision or 2060 vision and so on. It progresses up and gets worse. The lines with the smaller letters below the 2020 line on the chart, they actually correspond to visual acuity measurements that are even better than 2020 vision. So I want you to get that. There is vision better than 2020 vision. So 2020 vision is not perfect vision. It is the normal vision. If you can read the letters that are on the line but below the 2020 vision line, then they say that you have you could have 2015 or 2010 or 25 vision. And when a human is said to have 20 slash five vision, that is the same as eagle's eye vision. That's co comparable to how an eagle sees in their um, eyesight. Okay. And so that the Lord revealed to me in this analogy that in Second Chronicles 20, 20, he gives us the prescription on how we can gain 2020 vision in the spirit. And we must remember now 2020 vision is not perfect. It is the normal. It is the standard. And so when we take that and we apply it into the spirit, 
to have 2020 vision is the standard measure of vision for the believer. God has given us a standard measure of vision. The word of God says he would that he would that all of us would be able to prophesy that all of us would be able to see well in the spirit and to speak what we see. But the, the, the standard measure for a believer starts at 2020 and he gives us that prescription in second Chronicles 2020. I'm telling you, there's before we go into that. Think about this. There's a scripture that talks about how. God has given us the measure of faith. Didn't say a measure of faith. It says the measure of faith. He's given to all of us the measure of faith. So the difference between the measure and a measure is if the scripture said that God has given us all a measure of faith, then we would be able to delineate and say, oh, well, God gave you a measure. He gave you 80, a measure of 80, and he gave me a measure of 20. And it would make uh, room for an, an in, uh, inequity where some people could have been could could have started off with a great measure of faith. And then we'd be able to make an excuse as to why they're able to do great exploits in God because, well, God gave them a measure of faith that was greater than the measure he gave me. That's not what he said. The word of God says he gave everybody the measure of faith. The indicates that there is a standard measure that all of us are born with. Now, all of us don't die with the same amount because some of us exercised our faith and it got stronger and and it had it demonstrated itself and, and it grew and grew and grew and increased over time because we exercised it. But some people don't exercise their faith, don't tap into their faith. Right. And so with that. The Lord revealed to me that the second Chronicles is his way of making sure that every believer has access and has the ability and starts off with the same standard of ability to get prophetic vision and receive prophetic vision and walk in it. And he did it in Second Chronicles 2020. Now, I do believe that there are, as we can see, there are other greater measures of vision according uh, uh, according to when we look at it from the natural standpoint if we can have 2020 vision th some people also have uh, the greater a greater ability of vision they they have 2015 they have a sharper visual acuity a 2010 vision and 25 vision well the lord shows me that the same as in the natural there are some people in the spirit that have an increased measure of vision where their vision is 2015 and 2010 and 25. But that is according to the call of God on their life. Those are the ones who are called to walk in the apostolic, to walk in the prophetic. His prophets are able to see they are privy and they can see things in the spirit that uh, that uh, the 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 average believer or the believer that's not called to uh, the office of the prophet they won't see, so that's why the prophet has to have 2015, 2010, and 25 visions so that they can go into the spirit and they can see and they can hear from God and they can bring that down and then they can release that word so that the believer can walk in 2020 vision. They can walk in a clarity of, of direction of the call of God on their life and what the Lord would have for them to do. 2020 vision. It is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 but when we read it we're going to start at verse 12 but i want to leave you with this every believer is provided the same measure of vision 2020 vision but the difference is not every believer will walk in it not every believer will walk in it. Everyone won't do it. 
So you have to make up your mind what you're going to do with your measure of vision. Are you going to walk in it? Are you going to walk with it until that comes to pass? Or are you going to reject it? Are you going to neglect it? That's going to be your decision. So listen. I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get your Bible. And to open it up to 2 Chronicles. Verse. Chapter 20. Verse 20. And just read that for a moment. And meditate on that. And when you're ready. I want you to press play on the second part of this message so that you can hear what the Lord is saying in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. God bless you.